Hi, everyone, and welcome. Today, I have the pleasure of having Lisa Transcendence Brown with me. Lisa is a way shower, an author, and a transformational speaker. And personally, Lisa has been a great guide for me in helping me understand a lot of what I'm experiencing on my own spiritual awakening path. And I'm just so pleased to have you here today, Lisa, to continue this conversation for the benefit of all of our listeners. You're welcome. Thank you much so. I'm excited. Much Thank appreciative you. for everybody. <laughs> yes, yes. Maybe if you'd like just to start a little bit, talk about your own um, history a little bit and how, where you were and how you've gotten to be where you are today. Okay, well, um, I was completely unconscious and asleep and full-blown human, if you will. I, I separated everything out into human, higher self, human soul, human universe, and, and I separate them so we can understand the process and how all this occurs. Um, I was full-blown, completely unconscious, had no awareness whatsoever, completely shut down and disconnected. Um, and, and then, uh, and for most of my life, but it was, it, the entire process most don't understand is we've always been trying to awaken or wake, wake up. Um, it, it's just that it wasn't time for us to wake up yet, and we just did it a little bit along the way, and then we hit the 2012 gateway, and it was like, okay, no more. No more, no more, no, no more non-ability to wake up. Everybody's got to wake up now. Um, I was a gatekeeper for 2012, but didn't know it at the time. And so in about 2000, um, I, I mean, I could go back through my whole existence and tell you what every moment meant to the whole journey, but I won't do that. We'll be here forever. Um, basically in around 2008, um, 2009, um, a lot of heart openings, a lot of um, a lot of circumstances that caused me to be pulled back and forth a lot. Which, which that pull, that push pull, that that up down, it, it is the process of awakening, opening our heart, and and then throwing us back into anything where we can't open up to get it all out of us. And also, um, I went through that pretty strongly. I chose a very extreme and harsh physical reality for a human. And so I had been working in corporate and, and law enforcement and legal and everything, you name it, accounting, finance, anything left brain logical, I did it. Computer programming, ripping them apart, putting them back together. This is, I mean, I loved every bit of it. Then it's time to wake up and it's like, okay, no, your whole human existence is going out the window. Now you got to start all over again. And it's like, but wait a minute, I had my human life. And it's like, nope, that one, that one's gone. You get to forget it. And I basically fell backwards into the whole thing completely clueless. Um, so deep into what they call dark night of the soul, which technically the soul isn't dark. Mm -hmm. our, our human is what we call darkness. It's our ego. It's our separation. It's our unconscious programs that we don't understand that are held in our cellular memory of our body. And that's what a lot of people are just now starting to understand that every bit of this is in our physical body. Um, and so falling back in, backwards into it without a clue, I chose the journey of having to experience everything first before I could understand it because experience is what teaches us. Yes. And, and so I had to have every freaking experience to wake me up drastically, dramatically, harshly, roughly, because those are called um, basically the abrupt and the harsh awakenings. When, when we've avoided and ignored and said, no, I don't want to wake up, then we choose the other path. And I chose the harsh, rough, rip her whole reality away from her so she can figure out that that's not who she is. Identities, labels, all that stuff, Things, needing things to make me happy or, or people uh, all wrapped up in things. All of that stuff has to go. We don't get those realities anymore. This is a, a completely different existence. And so I spent three years um, delving into, I went from, there was no higher power. There was no other power. There was nothing outside of me. Give me all the proof. I don't want to listen to you guys. You're crazy. I was the other one. Um, to experiencing the bizarre weird of multidimensionality uh, to the other extreme, to, to things moving and breathing and, and, and like a, a huge acid L LSD trip, um, which is what happens when the quantum field starts to relax, which we don't understand at the time. 
So um, it's also when lucid dreaming starts to anchor in the physical. But, but in the beginning, we just get little glimpses to wake us up that there's something else. Mm-hmm. I went into um, my first thing that really got my attention was somebody called me an empath. And the word caused me to go into an obsession to figure out what was wrong with me, not understanding there's nothing wrong with us. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was finally happy to have an explanation that, that explained w- what was unexplainable. And so that became my new identity. And we have to move through all that stuff too. Then I moved into the world of psychic. So I went from compl- working for an engineering company to a full-blown psychic in, in, in a matter of a year or two. And my world, talk, talk, talk about getting turned upside down. Um, and everybody's looking at me going, Lisa, what happened to Lisa? (laughs) But you know, what's funny is when this world started, I called it the world of the bizarre for the what I embraced it as the crazy lady. And the funny part is when everybody starts to wake up, they go looking for the crazy lady. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. The one who's going to understand the weird, bizarre dreams. Oh, my life. What's going on with me? The one who isn't holding judgment. Right. Because judgment (laughs) is a huge part of this process. So it was funny because in the beginning when my universe said, and at the time I had outside higher selves, eventually you move into the embodiment process where they're inside and you have to walk this existence. You have to be a higher self. So while in the beginning, we're first just waking up that there is something else, then there's a process. It's a continual process this is a continual process that never ends. You just go higher and higher and higher in frequency and you take your body with you, physical body ascension. You leave the lower dimensions behind. They don't exist. They're not in your reality. You don't experience them. It's really cool. And if you do, you are aware that that's somebody else's. It's just not yours. There's just nothing that you respect. Mm -hmm. Um, Choices. You just don't bring it into your world because you're in service. You're, you're making a difference. You're helping others. You're, you're sharing the information. You're doing what you came here to do as your soul purposes. Um, for souls, it's called purposes. For humans, it's called roles. And for galactics, it's called missions. And so when we become all three, then I have human roles. I have soul purposes and I have galactic missions. As galactics, especially being a prominent or, or dominant Syrian, you're on a mission all the time. So each characteristic of our traits each trait or each galactic um, energy that we embody we actually access and have access and hold those gifts we hold the um, traits of those we hold the um, knowledge of each and we get all the abundance that goes along with it too but we have to we we have to fulfill each one of those parts of us that and each one is very different. So that's what a lot of people are going through um, now is one waking up to duality, which is, which is a, this is against that. There's, there's always a, a polar opposite. Um, and, and that has a bazillion purposes. And then you move into multidimensionality, which in the beginning, you're all over the place and feel psychotic and, and, and like you've got multiple personalities. And, and one minute you can be happy, blissful, magic. Next moment, you're like blowing up, losing it and going all over the place. <laughs> Next minute, you're loving and crying and people are like, oh my God, I've lost my mind. <laughs> this is called Welcome to Multidimensionality. <laughs> Oh, I'm just laughing because all the emotions, all the, the roller coaster ride, the, the, that's the cleansing process. Okay. <laughs> all of that, I know it's like all the things we judged a long time ago, we just completely lose our mind. And, and we have a saying, you have to lose your mind to find it because basically what humans, what, what we, somebody asked me one time, Lisa, are you human? And I'm like, and I'm looking up going, what are you talking about? Of course. Uh, and it confused me. Well, anything that confused you is going to make you think, mm-hmm. which is the purpose. That's why so many people are confused right now is because your, your mind no longer, you, ha- you have to shift out of your human mind into your higher mind where your heart has to open for you to have access to that. And so the moment somebody asks you something that's confusing, you're going to stop and start thinking about it. And, and that's part of planting the seeds. That's part of uh, uh, weaving um, light into our existence and all these kind of things. And, I went, I'm as human as you are. And I'm like, what are they talking about? Well, it didn't take me long to understand because boom, that was the activation I needed to awaken. I'm not human. 
And, and, and it's funny because people look at me and they're like, Lisa, you are so not human. You are not even from this planet. And it's like, nope, I'm not. Because <laughs> when you're a star seed displaced on the wrong planet, it, be, it gets a bit weird because we do have to go through clearing all of those old existences and, and the past and the future will collapse. They don't exist anymore. And then all you have is right now and simultaneous existences that run concurrently to this one right here. And you get access to all of those existences. But if they feel like another time somewhere else, then that's our separation. And, when, and the more we collapse that and unify inside, the less distance there is because that's just a, dim a dimensional timeline. And can I ask you to clarify something I think is really sure. important. When you're talking about human, and our other more expanded who we are in terms of that um how would you just to pinpoint that a little bit more for our listeners because i think that's probably where a lot of people are right now or just are they're coming out of that so we're in a human body obviously but we're our expansion is waking up to the more of who we are is that how you would yeah, see yeah. that it's on the inside when when you fully truly awaken inside you have an energetic awakening of a consciousness inside of you and basically you can be in this body and somewhere else too okay and and what will happen is um i call the human or basically i let go of the word ego a long time ago because it got a bad rap because people don't understand the purpose of the ego and so basically when we separate off from all of our other aspects we go human that's how i describe it because human in the beginning is who we are but the, but the more we do this process human becomes the very smallest part of who we are and then it's almost non-existent and the moment it, that that it's just an old program right it's just old it's just old beliefs. It's just limited beliefs and perceptions. And, and human technically represents all our lack. Lack of love, lack of respect. And, and I mean deep, sacred love, deep, sacred connection, mm -hmm. inner connection with all things as one again, and, and, and compassion and consideration and respect and integrity, all the things that we look for in other people, we have to possess all of those things again. It's no longer about anybody out there. They're our mirror, they're our reflection. They show us what we hold inside. Now it changes from time to time because the, the more we become a higher self, they're no longer technically our reflection, but they are, but it's in a very different way than it was before. So in the beginning, if you will, once you move into the observer role, which is, is being your higher self aspect, you, in your physical form, you can observe everything and disconnect from it all. And nothing's personal and everything has a purpose. And you, you, you get to observe everything as it occurs, which is kind of cool because you can slow everything down. You can, you, you can bring time to a halt. Some of our gifts are, are, are cool and fun. Um, all of our gifts are cooler. <laughs> no, sorry. Um, but, but the thing about it is, is all of this occurs only when the heart opens. And that's what everybody's going through on earth right now is all of the what, well, not everybody, but everybody in the unconscious dimensions, if you will, which is what I call human. When we go unconscious, we go back to just a limited human. And, and, and we go back into survival protection. I don't have enough. I'm not enough. I don't understand. I don't want to listen. I want it my way. All of these things are what basically dissolve, collapse, or get ripped away. And so based for us, when we start understanding, well, I'm going to have to do this journey anyway, because at first, a lot of people wake up to becoming spiritual, which is what I did. Um, and, and there are different avenues of waking up to and there's a billion of them There's not just one and that's the thing about this. Everybody does this exactly Perfectly for themselves the way that they chose to come here and experience not one of us are victims Nothing happened to us When when we reach a certain level of awareness, we realize this is our intended and chosen journey as a soul here mm -hmm. And the moment we realize that, we realize that, that we have the capability to choose how we want to experience this. And that's when the power comes in, mm -hmm. is when you start to realize you get a choice. Now, in one aspect, you do get a choice, and another one, you don't. Right. Because everything is predetermined. <laughs> I know what you're going to say, I think. <laughs> 
But in this moment, if you're really present, you get to choose whether you want to experience it from a place of unity and love and respect and awesomeness and abundance and all these things you came here to, to experience and have. Um, or are you going to experience as a lesson? And a lesson is just an experience. It's just an opportunity to learn. Right. But each word means something different depending on which aspect you are. And the biggest thing is to realize, and this is really, really cool, that earth is not one dimension. It's a bazillion of them. It's a bazillion timelines and they get to move in and out of them the more light that you hold. So when you focus on your vibration, your light, and raising your vibration and choosing and making those decisions that as humans we want to avoid. Oh, I don't want to do this. It might hurt somebody. And, and we have to get over all that stuff because we're not here to hurt people. We're here to raise the consciousness of everybody on earth and hurt and, and attachment and cords and friends. Those are all human things. And you start to realize you don't need those things because if you're coming from that, that deep sacred place inside of you, that place of respect, that place of honor, you're not going to be experiencing those things. They don't happen because you don't allow them. And your circles they don't continue. Change, correct? Your circles of everything, people that you attract, you'll, you will be releasing Constantly. old relationships and creating new relationships based on this new frequency. It's all vibrational. Your realities become vibrational and energetic. So you move out a, a, of a physical reality into a different physical reality, which is made up of, um, okay, if, See, the higher we go in, in frequency, the more our pineal activates, the, the more you have holographic access to all the dimensions and how things work and all the knowledge comes forth too. So what will happen is you move out of a, it's a very physical fixed reality into an energetic one. And once you start paying attention to the vibrations and the energy of things, your reality completely changes. Once you move into a vibrational existence, then everything else collapses and you can do it intentionally instead of having to suffer to it like the old way was. Um, and, and then you start paying attention to the vibration of things and they either resonate or they don't. Right. Exactly. It's resonate and resonate means now what happens is the, the realities will constantly shift and change energetic new earth. New earth is energetic and crystalline, which means a whole lot of things, but basically everything is always in flux. The only thing that is solid is the foundation that something is built on. And if it's built on any foundation that has any unconsciousness in it, then that reality will dissolve, collapse, fall apart, whatever words you want to use, because it doesn't really matter. They lend to a mindset, mm -hmm. if you will, which is why we change every word we use too, because we don't create the old mindsets. We don't enable, we, we don't support the old ways anymore. And basically you pull out of one existence and move completely into a completely different one. But it's, it happens over what we call the separation of time. It will, con it will occur. Things will continue to occur until the vibration activates that says no more. You don't get to stay in that vibration of safe and security and lack of trust anymore. Mm. And that's what this is, is everybody has to move out of those unconscious vibrations because they were created from fear. Right. And we don't get to live in fear and lack of power and lack of love and lack of respect and lack of, con and it's all about me right. anymore. Um, and, and so that's what's collapsing. All of the cords, all of the, I need that person to be happy. I need that thing to be happy. Happy goes, comes from inside. Peace comes from inside. And you recognize outside what is in alignment with what, with your, your soul, your spirit, your higher self aspect, your universe, you, and it's no longer what your little human wants. It's very different. The cool part is everything you desire, all the support you want, everything that you came here to experience, it all comes forth when you start embracing and go all in. And I mean, go all in with everything you got. There, there isn't, this is no longer a part-time job being spiritual. Spiritual became a new belief system. And so, but the spiritual is necessary in the beginning for people to connect with their spirit, if you will. Uh, um, before that, we didn't even acknowledge that spirit existed. We were humans. We had this. We didn't want anybody's help. We were tough. We had walls up, you know, don't bother me, all of these things. And all that's got to go. All the, I can't work together. All the, it's all about me, but it'll shift into, it has to be all about me, which is confusing. 
because as humans, we were taught, we, 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 it doesn't really matter how all came to be at this point and because it, it was all meant to be. But as humans, we were taught to focus on the outside world, the judgment, what everybody else needed first. And, and we start to wake up and your heart starts to open. You have to focus on yourself from that point forward. And what's in alignment, what's not, what you, if you, if you were, if what you need um, in order to get your vibration up, in order to clear and cleanse, all of those things have to come first because technically you can't be in intentional service to assist with, with humanity and global consciousness and galactic consciousness and all these other consciousness if you're not going to honor yourself first. Yes. And then what will happen was once you've done the part of the process enough to honor you, then you're, one, you're always in service. The question is which collective are you in service to? And that will tell you a whole lot because old earth is one collective. New earth is a completely different one. And two is when you start doing these things intentionally, um, not setting an intention to get around to it one day. That's not how that was the old way. Right. I, you know, when somebody says, Oh, let me set the intention. Then you're sitting here going, okay, now what are you doing about it? <laughs> right. You know, and it's been, it's been interesting because I didn't know people still did that. It, it's like, so, you're 1800 or something <laughs> a lot of that going on to pre-2012 beliefs and practices but you know what they are necessary for those who start to wake up because it, it's a repatterning it's a reprogramming process and it's it's a creating of new habits over the old yes. and, and it doesn't matter what it is that we do as long as we're doing what works for us and, and that's what really matters here, because what happens is when we start to focus on ourselves and our light and, and this activation of this beauty inside and start to love ourselves completely, let go of all the judgment, quit worrying about what everybody else is saying or doing, because technically, if you are, then you're human and you're worried about listening to another human that's going to be judging. And it's just this old cycle that never ends. Right. And when we start to love and respect ourselves, truly. Um, then what happens is our whole world starts to change. And that's when we're able to start being in service more and more and more. And that's when all the support starts to come in. But it's also when um, we start turning into what we call a, a light anchor here, uh, a grid keeper, um, all of the, all these words apply. Um, what happens is when you start anchoring light in your body, then you start sleeping a whole lot, photonic light. So, and a lot of people don't understand the whole body goes sideways in a way while it's anchoring light because the control of the human is removed. You don't get to control this part of the pro all the control goes and you move into a complete surrendered state uh, of, of being in tune with the whole universe and listening and a receptive mode of where, where you are in union with the universe it's your best friend it tells you what to do and then eventually it's no longer out there it's you and you become the whole universe you become huge you're 30 feet tall in your body you're walking around and you're going whoa and you're so expansive the rest of the world doesn't even exist lisa so i'm so it, glad <laughs> sorry to interrupt you but i am so Go glad ahead. you just i'm glad for everything you're saying but those last few points especially just now just resonated and were so animated to me the sleeping needing that energy for the inner process to go within to to really shift out of the hustle and bustle in the outside world the feeling taller i've experienced that myself it's a very interesting experience and other people have even commented to me about it it's not just yeah. my felt sense. Other people have said, you are so tall. And I thought, well, that's really interesting. That's when you're fully expanded as the whole universe again. That, that's when you're in your ascended state. That's when nothing outside is bigger than you are. That's interesting. I'm glad you gave a that's definition true. to that. I, I didn't know what was going on. Well, and if you'll notice when you're in, those, in that really expanded state, um, all time will come to a halt and, and there'll be no future or past. Oh yeah. And half the time you won't even know your name, who you are, where you're going. All this stuff goes because when, <laughs> I know everybody's going, what? But you know what? It's, <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm laughing because I'm so glad you're talking about this because the I, weirdness. 
Well, yes. And I really want to sit, talk about this because I felt like my, a lot of my brain has just been offline. Mush. And mush, complete mush. And yet I'm trying to do a lot of, you know, linear that's your human brain. That's mush. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what happens is, is once your heart, you, you've, so, so I'm going to, I'm going to shift this just for, for a moment. You've been doing the open my heart work for a long time, right? Yes. Okay, so what happens is the, the beginning of the fifth dimension is learning to open the heart. And once the heart stays open long enough, then the higher mind's activated to come online. Okay. Now, this is what a lot of people in the beginning will channel in order to access the higher intelligence. But, but what will happen is instead of channeling anymore, then it comes inside and, and your mind, your human mind goes offline. So your higher mind can come online, which is where all the knowledge comes from. Okay. You have access to the entire universe. You have access to all of these records. You have access to knowledge that your human doesn't have the capacity, capacity, whatever that is. <laughs> we make up words here, by the way. Um, well, that's exactly what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> Compatibility. That was two of them all merged. Um, I love it. That's exactly what I'm experiencing. So it's perfect that that just happened right there. That's a great example. That's because your language centers will be taken offline for you to move into a higher state of consciousness. And when you're moving into a higher state of consciousness, then what will happen is you'll experience the, the expanded state, but then your body's got to go through the integration process to hold that light inside and to do the reconfiguration process and a recalibration process in order for your body to process the light through. And that's when the crystals in unity consciousness, Christ consciousness kick in. They're all the same thing, but there are crystals in our body. And our whole body turns into a super quantum computer processor. We process a ridiculous amount of information through our physical body structures but in the beginning it was the heart okay. and then once we've achieved keeping the heart open most of the time gone through the heavy duty stuff and all that kind of stuff you know cleared and cleansed and we're doing this intentionally and we start to get ourselves on a path if you will right um, that's more in alignment with our soul purposes and what we know we're here to do then the higher mind is activated to come online. And that's when the integrity, the challenging of integrity, the challenging of respect, the challenging of all of this is when your challenges start because you don't get anybody else to go ask what to do anymore. You have to do it. There is no, what do I do and wait? To, but in the beginning, we didn't even ask what to do. So in the beginning, we have to ask what to do and we wait for an answer because that's our delay. That's our separation inside. But each time we ask what to do, we start to learn what's appropriate, what's in alignment and what's not. And so it's an entire process of relearning everything all over again by listening to something that's invisible. Exactly. <laughs> and we don't trust it. Because we didn't trust ourselves. This is a constant proving process. You're proving to yourself that you can hold the integrity. You're proving to yourself that you can come from that place every time. It isn't that your universe has never been there for you. Your universe is you in a higher dimension. When you're in that expanded state, you are the universe again. There's no separation in that place. But when you can track back down, then you separate off. And then we go back to asking what to do because we're learning and we're not expanded in that into all of those dimensions anymore. The cool part is that, well, there's many cool parts. The cool part is that the more you do the new practices, the more you implement them and apply them to your life, the more you live them, the easier it gets. And, and, and that's when the old starts to fall away really fast. That's when you start moving into quantum. And, and, and then it, after a while, all the crystals in your body have to develop. And, and I mean, it's a process. It took me years uh, of each embodiment process phase. And, and to go from just a typical human body activating, technically, it took me 40, 35 to 40 years just for my light body to activate. Wow. And then once my light body activated, then I averaged about two years per each phase and process. Um, why, and I was, and, and it was basically my universe told me to shut the whole world out, do nothing but this anymore, nothing, let it all go. Because being a gatekeeper, I had to catch up. I was really behind. 
I had no clue. And I had to achieve everything before we came through the 2012 gateway because I was a gatekeeper in 2012. Having no clue what that meant um, because I didn't understand anything until afterwards. And then to bring through all the information on the Merkaba that was from the feminine way and teach people. So I would write every day about what was going on. Now, a lot collectively, the whole world is just now experiencing what we've already done years ago. As the forerunners, we all had to come through and do it first so that we could then teach so that, so that others don't have to suffer. We did it to basically assist with the, the hard part for others so they don't have to go through what we went through. Um, they will still have to go through certain things that are necessary because the more human one went, the more unconscious they went, the more is embedded in the physical body that has to clear and cleanse. And all that separation and suppression turns into physical and emotional and mental pain when they eat, we go through the ego death, which is what leads into your phoenix conversation. That's right. Next. <laughs> but the, when we're experiencing basically the death um, of unconsciousness, the death of our ego, then it's extremely emotionally and mentally challenging, rough, intense. Um, if we don't understand it, if we understand it, we go through it very differently. We can move through it in gratitude. We can move through it with, with the knowledge that it's just a part of the process and it won't last forever. And we can actually, we have practices that we can apply that will actually move it out quicker and easier, which is kind of cool. Because we don't have to do it the old way that, that, that those of us who chose all this, the heavy duty suffering, um, that's why we chose the heavy duty suffering. It was so that we could turn around and share the knowledge of, hey guys, you don't have to do that. <laughs> we already did it, um, which, is, which is what the way shower does. The way shower paves the way. It breaks all that stuff down and it basically obliterates the old and just goes on completely and says, okay, guys, you can come with us if you want to, but we'll be over here doing this. We don't get caught up in the old ways or the story or the excuses or all of those things because that's all human and stuff. So there's a, there's a lot to this process. Technically, everybody here is a way shower, which is kind of cool because yeah. each person, when you step into your power, you become the way shower. Right. You, became, you become the one that teaches everybody around you and shares for everybody around you and shows. That's what you show the way. Exactly. You show others there's a different way. They don't have to do it the old ways anymore if, and this is the key, if they're truly open, if they really care, right. if it really matters, and if it's a priority. Because what will happen is this isn't a priority to the human until the world is affected. Exactly. Their health is affected. Their jobs are affected. Their relationships are until everything is gone. The, the ego human aspect will fight to the death. And that's what this is. You, you want to stop fighting and have to the death of that. You, you want to collapse those beliefs. The moment, and this is a cool part about jumping in and, and shifting timelines intentionally, is you, the moment you come into the realization that that's no longer true for you, you can collapse that whole reality, boom, gone, move on to another one, and you get to pick the reality you want to have here. You know, so, long around. Go ahead. Sure. Is this what, I really want to touch on this one thing. You said, and we can make things easier. Could you explain how that's happening and how people can make it easier? Well, we'd be here forever only because there's so much to that. But yes, I can. One is when your heart opens, your whole body relaxes. When, and I tell people, close your eyes and go inside. Close your eyes and let everything fall away. Close your eyes and come to that place inside and just be. Let it all go. It doesn't matter anymore. Just go inside and sit and be in this space inside and, and, and breathe and bring, bring light into your body. Breathe, bring peace into your body. Breathe. You have to breathe and bring it all in inside mm -hmm. and, and come back to inside and, and because when we're human we're scattered off into other times we're scattered off into our fear we're scattered off into the story of what's going to happen we're scattered off in all these different times yeah past well, and what future. happened past and future 
is that time was the separation of the third and the fourth dimension. It doesn't exist anymore. And that's what everybody's experiencing is the speeding up of time. Mm -hmm. yep. Now, it only speeds up if you're in your head. Uh, I have to say something quickly because I've noticed time speeding up, yet it's slowing down to this. I don't even know how to describe the sensation, but it's like the most essential, yep. solid, grounded awareness expanded yes. and i felt both i felt it go back and forth. you're gonna feel both a couple of years yes. now it's been like that that's because when what will happen and this is the cool part is your your feeling time notice you're feeling the speed yes of time yeah it's true human we used to look at a clock and go oh the clock's moving really fast you're feeling Ah, I see. So that's our new clock. Feeling. Yeah. Yep. You wake up when you wake up, you go to bed when your body says go to sleep. Now there's a whole lot of stuff that comes into this, but the difference is what you said is you feel the speed. Now, that's what dictates time for us, how fast things go, how slow energetically you're in tune with the universe and what's fast and what's slow. You speed up and slow down based upon what you feel. When it's time to speed up, when you feel it, you know when to go faster. Now, the cool part is the slower you go inside, the higher your vibration gets. The higher your vibration gets, the more you're, okay, so I got to go backwards for just one moment here, okay? In the old days when we were human, and I'm going to go to the Merkaba, because eventually once you ascend in the physical, the Merkaba becomes obsolete. It collapses and goes away. You don't need it anymore. You've ascended in the physical, and, and it's all done. You've reversed the polarity of everything in your life to, to spin the other direction, which is in alignment okay. with higher light. Mm -hmm. And so as a human, and I'm going to do this just for the visit. As a human, everything spun backwards. So this is going to be masculine. This is going to be feminine. Okay. And, and in the, I used to lie. I used to do stuff that was, I used to self-sabotage. I used to judge. I used to, it doesn't matter. You know, um, I used to blame myself, all of those things. Okay. Drama. That's all this spin. Now, the moment you become conscious and your heart opens, you go, Oh no, 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 no more. Not in my world. No more. No, no. I don't believe that. No, I'm, I'm going to lie. I got to stand up and tell the truth. All of this, what used to spin backwards, starts slowing down. The moment you say, no, I'm not doing that anymore, it starts to come to a halt. That's your zero point. The moment you start doing the opposite of what your human mind used to say, which is going to be your heart, right. that spin starts going the other direction. Now, everything was backwards. Everything was in reverse. Everything was the opposite in the human versus the higher realms, if you will. So every time you tell the truth, every time you come from love, every time you have integrity, this increases more and more. And eventually what will happen is it'll get so big that they spin really, really fast. And when they start spinning, they're able to spin so fast that they merge into the same frequency. And everything collapses. I love that you gave that visual example. That was beautiful because I'm very visual. And you just, you just put something to an, an experience and a feeling that I've had that I could somehow understand it a little better for my, for my mind. You know, it's, it's that visual. part of me. We simplify everything. It's no longer the old logical way of you have to do this and you have to do that. Um, basically, the only thing you have to do is reverse the polarity of what you used to do to do the opposite than what your head used to say. Very simple. And so basically, it is that simple. I <laughs> know. See, I told you, it's, it was so freaking, co as, as humans, we complicated the whole thing. We got all caught up in the mind games of that. Mm. And, and when you move into your higher dimensional aspects of yourself, all of that falls away. You don't need proof anymore. You listen to the way you feel. You honor what's important and true for you because when you are, you're honor, honoring all others too. Yes, yes. And that's what most don't understand is that this all starts with each one of us. Yes. 
And that when we go inside and we come from that place of higher integrity, higher love, the deeper inward we go, the more expanded we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The more access you have to the other dimensions, the more information you get access to. But humans avoid going inward, which means they don't have any access. Right. From the fears so, and the limitation and the blocks the and all of that and stuff. And the misperceptions. It's all misperception. And it's, it, it's all a limited belief. Mm. That's what we do is collapse those belief systems. They're not true anymore. Mm -hmm. They're not. They, they, and if you want, if you really need the strong energy to get through something, it was just, just call it a lie. It was a lie. But right. you don't go right. blaming somebody else. You, you, you take responsibility. And the thing about it is, is this is everybody taking responsibility and holding themselves accountable. Exactly. That's what our human aspect can't do. Right. That is such a key thing right there. And that's maybe that and surrender, I would just off the top of my head would say those are the two things that are most fundamental and valuable in really gaining momentum in this process and really, you, yeah. Well, and I'll tell you two ways that are easy to reach the surrendered state. Okay, please do. <laughs> One is if it's really, really tough and you're having a hard time and your body and everything is all caught up in it. Mine was to throw myself on the bed. I just threw myself backwards with my arms open and my legs straight out and I gave up. I broke myself. I collapsed. It's the fastest way to break that resistant, tough energy that we've got going inside. And so when things weren't working and I was having a rough time and it was all bottling up and my muscles were tightening down because people don't understand your muscles are the grid work for the earth you walk on. Really? I did not know and that. that. And most people don't understand <laughs> because you have to have access. You have to have done it. You, you, you have to have applied it to your world to understand and you have to have gone through the yes. process or you're not going to have a clue. Right. It's so everybody walking around telling everybody how to do this. If they haven't done it, you can tell the difference because those who have done it don't hold judgment and they really don't care if you ca if you get it or not. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. we're not sitting around trying to beat it into anybody's head. We make the information available. And if you're not ready for it, so what you, you will be if and when, and if you're not, somebody will be, it doesn't really matter. And, and that's the cool part is we, you don't get all tied up in other people's stuff. You're not trying to change anybody. You're not trying to save anybody. This is on each one of us. So if we're suffering, then that's because we are separated. Full consciousness eliminates suffering. So it you, is this. you mentioned the one thing about surrendering, throwing yourself on the okay. bed. What was the other one? <laughs> Sorry. You know, mate, we go nonlinear all no over problem. the place. Um, Okay, so I would throw myself on the bed and give up. If I needed to cry, I would break down and cry. If I needed to get angry and cuss and yell, I would get angry. It didn't really matter, but I learned to break my little human, break the energy, break it myself, because I didn't need my universe, me, to break me anymore. And that's key, because the more we hold on, the tighter we hold down, the more we have to be broken to get all that open back up again. So I started understanding that if I would just break myself and let go, then, then my body would relax, my heart would open, the struggle and the suffering would stop. And then I'd go through a cleansing process after, because once you do that, then your vibrations got to raise. And when your vibrations got to raise, then you get really tired and you need to sleep. So that's a part of the process that a lot of people, there, there are so many parts to this process. It's a never ending thing. There's so much information available. The only thing is that we have to want it. We have to desire it. We have to really care because if it's not a priority to us, something will occur to make it a priority. Exactly. <laughs> that's one thing we've learned along the way. And, and all of a sudden, this will be the most important thing you ever do. <laughs> you really learn to listen and pay attention quickly, don't you? Yes. Or most okay, people. So that, so that was basically when I was strong, masculine, stubborn, heart closed, heavy duty mind control, I would just throw myself on the bed and give up. Or I would go, the other thing was to go get out in nature and get, get away from it all and let go. Oh, yeah. I would get out, go walk in the trees, go sit and take a journal, go sit and talk to the universe. So that leads into the second thing. The feminine way of doing this, masculine is strong and harsh. Feminine is soft and easy. So you get to choose which way you want to do the journey. If you're going to be in your stubborn masculine energy as a human, that's your ego, then you're going to do it rough and harsh. 
if you're going to be in your feminine energy and soft and open, then you're going to be open to listening. So the other thing is to open two-way communication with your universe and talk out loud 24 hours a day. Call your universe your new best friend. Okay, universe, let's do this. What are we going to do today? Okay, universe, you got to be okay with looking like you're crazy. Okay, <laughs> you, you got to be okay with looking like you're crazy. But, but would you rather look non-crazy and be suffering? Right. <laughs> doing without. Or would you rather look crazy and be having a blast and living in full everything and magic and bliss and, and awesomeness again? So you kind of have to choose which one. Do you want to be crazy, fun, awesome, or do you want to be <laughs> normal human suffering? I'm Not just laughing. Crazy. I'm just laughing because I'm identifying so strongly with what you're talking about. <laughs> I totally get it. Yes, but it does become this yes. this dialogue that you're talking about is like the due north now. At least for me, it's it, yeah. I've learned how to follow that, and of course, I'm still learning uh, different times or whatever may be more difficult every moment we are every moment it really is like a course correction with that being my compass and I talk about navigating the ascension process and that exactly that's so perfect for the way I, I see it I mean it's really that dialogue you, your human has to relinquish the need to control it all you actually have to open up to listening to your own higher guidance which is you all those ascended masters they're you all those galactics, they're you. But in the beginning, we're separated, so we keep consulting them because we don't hold the integrity in our own lives or the vibration yet because there's still something anchored in our physical body that's in the way, which is why this is, is a full-blown everything process. Um, but it's 24 communication. Okay, so I'm going to flip this for a moment. The human, when it gets desperate and it's separated, will go and pray and beg. Okay, now that's getting the human to start listening, to opening up, because we didn't want to listen before. We, we had it covered. We knew the way we wanted it. Nobody could tell us anything, blah, 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 right? Very fixed realities. They had to be this way. <clears throat> well, what happens is the reason things occur to push us to that place of prayer is because we were shut down and disconnected and prayer opens that connection back up. The only thing is the more human we are, the less we understand. And so we pray, we ask for what we want or we beg for, and then we walk away. Well, the thing about it is, is that doesn't work. That's human. That's the human's way of telling the universe, this is what I want, but I'm not willing to do anything for it. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I know I went there. I, I was complete shut down. There was no universe. There was no higher anything. You don't pray. You don't do any of these things. And I mean, complete shut down, the <clears throat> disconnect. Shut down and disconnect are the same thing. The difference is prayer is that opening to reconnect again. The only thing is the more human we are, the less we stop and listen. Mm -hmm. and, and so listening is the second part, which is what people use meditation for. They open exactly. up to listening. Mm -hmm. So you want to combine prayer and meditation to be the same thing. You want to combine to, you want it to, for a long time, I only had one way communication. And one day I opened up to a Lyran, Lyran channeling within myself. And, and, and I had stopped channeling, but my universe said, you're going to channel. I'm like, I'm not going to channel. And it's like, <laughs> I don't channel. And it's like, oh yes, you are <laughs> I'm like, okay. Because I didn't understand at the time that every time a new channeling came through, that that was a new aspect of myself and that I couldn't embody that aspect if I wasn't open to it to come through me first. So it would have to come through me and then boom, instant integration would start occurring if I was open to that. In the beginning, it took months and months and months and years. And then after a while, it was an hour and then it was like, boom, instant, no time at all. The moment I opened to it, it's right then all the knowledge and everything because that's the vibration that I hold. It is instant integration, if you will, and, and then other things take longer. You want two-way communication. You want your universe, your higher self, your guides. You want to realize they are you. They, okay, they are you in your perceived future. They are your higher vibrational you. Mm -hmm. 
They are in another timeline, another physical reality that has already occurred, and they are here to guide you that if you will listen, you can achieve and have all the things you desire, but you have to listen. You have to honor. You have to do what you're shown, and if you're not going to, then you're going to go back down that separated path of human to, to learn to listen. <laughs> as many times and, as needed, that, right? <laughs> as many times as needed until all that I don't want to listen energy is gone that right. was anchored in your body. Oh, yeah. And that's what this is about. And so basically you open two way communicate. Okay. Universe and get a bebop start. Okay. Universe. We got this. What are we going to do today? And my 24 seven was talking to my universe myself and, and listening inside of me to the ideas and the words that came the, the more bizarre, the more real, the more they push us beyond our limits, the more we have to do them. Yeah. The more they challenge us, the more they're, they're, that's that's what's necessary um, because we're not meant to have limits anymore we're, we're not meant to live in those old limited realities of, of old beliefs that aren't true in those old programs that kept us in a prison basically and, and you can't move into a higher vibrational reality and hold on to the old one at the same time yeah you have to let go for the other one to come forth so now I'm going to explain it in a different way Everything in your world is physical matter that is that is is basically materialized as a vibration that you hold. Uh huh. Yes. So when people are too, they're materialized vibrations. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now, when you shift vibrations, then you get new people. Sometimes. Now, the human will be holding on going, no, 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 I can't let go of that. And that's how realities collapse is because the holding on creates the collapse to have to occur. When you actually are willing to let go, then you'll let it go so that something new can come in. Because when a timeline collapse occurs, you have multiple dimensions merging in the same physical space. And the new things you've waited for can't come forth because you're still holding on to something energetically that's in the way. So you have to let go of the old so the new can come through. You don't have enough physical space. Right, right. Physical matter takes up space. Right. But it takes form in response to you. Right. So when you start to realize, oh, it looks like that's going to have to go, that means something awesome's coming, <laughs> you immediately want to follow it up. Pay attention. That means something awesome is coming. And, and for me, I started to realize I, I just opened up every day in the beginning when, it, when I first opened up to the fifth dimension, because the fifth dimension is just the beginning. So once you open up to the fifth dimension, then you go so far beyond all of those and every dimension opens up and you have access to all of them. There's no more, no more limits anymore. And, and I started, at first it was, okay, universe, bring me the magic. Okay, universe. And I looked for magic all day long. And the most magical things happened in my world. Every exchange was magical. Okay, universe, I'm ready. Let's do this. Okay. And it was constantly me telling my universe, I want this. I want this. I want this. But I focused on inner happy, inner, not a thing. I never limited myself to a reality. I just spoke what would be awesome. And then I said, okay, or bring me one more awesome than that. And you have to open up to the unexpected to nice. be surprised. And trust, yes. yes. Yep. And you're establishing that trust. Now, the thing, so let me ask you a question. Sure. What is it you don't trust? Ultimately, it's something with inside of myself. That's what just came in. And I don't, I don't know exactly what that is, but, but I know it's all within me. So it must be something that's within me. And I think it's just previous experiences that I still relate to or identify with that I haven't transcended. It's like that connection to some maybe previous kind of construct within myself. And it's a matter of identifying that, whether how clearly on the mental level it is, I don't know, but somehow transcending beyond that. I mean, it's that process of coming up against outward situations that illuminate that for me and allow me to, you know, go beyond. So let me ask you a question, because this is a good place to play, is that when one thing is when you close your eyes and go inside, you open your pineal gland, which means your inner vision opens up. Mm -hmm. Now, at first, it's just energetic. So when you said, I don't know if it's my mind, basically, anytime you get stuck, anytime you can't hear, 
anytime you don't understand, you close your eyes and you go inside. Okay. When we did that a little while ago, even for a minute, man, I felt that difference. You know, I was conscious of that expanded. You pull it all in. Yeah, yeah, I could feel that. Pull it all in, go deep inside, and, and the deeper inside you go, the more it's going to activate on the cellular memory, everything inside of you that isn't in alignment with your next new reality, isn't in alignment, and it's going to come up and clear. A cellular cleansing will be anger, tears, the need to all these things, all of the judgment, all those things. And you want to honor the process of your body releasing everything that was suppressed deep inside. Mm. The, the thing about it is, is we don't trust the unknown. Yeah. Yeah. So, but when you close your eyes and you go inside, and I used to say, sit with it till it fits. Sit with it. Until you have sat with it long enough to where that peace and that unity come in. Sit until you're comfortable. Sit with it until you understand. Sit, close your eyes. Stay there for all day long if you got it. The reason being, and if it's not working, then go try something else. Come back later. But the thing about it is, is if the human mind is too strong, it takes a little while. And you should be, I would say, universe, I'm going to raise my vibration. I just, talk, I just call it my universe because it doesn't have an entity. It's not a thing. I know it's me. I'm walking around talking to myself and I'm waiting. The difference in a human is I'm waiting for an answer. You know, it's coming. If you, if you ask now, selfish separated human asks and walks away and just expects to get it done for them and they don't have to do anything. No, that's not how this works. No, it's not. <laughs> You're going to do the, the tough, rough, hard, this uncomfortable stuff because that was the energy that was in the way. Right. Exactly. All that energy is what's blocking all those portals that open up to the higher dimension realms and all these amazing experiences that you want to have. The fear and, and hold, I, my, my phrase is um, when you hold back, it's your lack. Very succinct. You don't hold back. There, there are so many phrases that are awesome that we come up with along the way when we start to realize. And so what's true for the human is going to be the opposite for your soul, though. So while it's going to be really hard for your human aspect, you, it's going to be really easy on a soul level. Yes. I'm, and I, so if you can realize, go ahead, sweetheart. Just want to say, I'm just concurring with what you're saying. This is, I mean, here and throughout every cell, I feel the truth and the resonance of what you're speaking about. I mean, there's more to it come. It gets very I'm, easy if you go inside. That's, that's All it. the answers yeah. are inside. That's, I but know. we don't want to listen. We don't want to go inside. And when we avoid going inside to get the answers, then out there is going to give us our answers. And the physical reality is the show. Uh-huh. Yes. It's what shows you that you don't want to see. Hmm. Beautifully it, said. It's, yes. It's what shows you that you're, that you're avoiding and ignoring, that you haven't resolved back into love and respect and integrity inside yourself. And where you keep giving your power away. That Every bit of this is, is coming back to full power. Full power. Yes. Yeah, so Fully re-empowered. Go ahead. Yeah, I just, again, it's like, my, I'm just, I feel alive right now. Again, it's like that I'm animated because it is the power. And that's where we're going. It's the power of our heart. It's the power of our fullness and our wholeness. And on and on and on and and what you just said how to do that is so powerful and it is into that power it's just all like it all just lit up when you said that and when you go deep inside and you connect in that space inside it opens up the universe it opens up the other dimensions it opens up everything that you want access to that your human doesn't have access to because your heart was closed it was walled up in protective mode and it shut down mm -hmm. and when the heart closes your access goes Right, right, totally. And so you got to get your heart back up. But now the cool part is the more your heart is open, then it kicks your higher mind in, which is where your intelligence comes from. I used to sit in floor and write out with colored markers on, on, on stock bar, uh, stock board. I'm, re I'm writing quantum physics out, and it's not information that my human understood. And I'm writing in relative theory and equations and, 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 all of, and, and mass and, and gravity and, and all of these things that just flooding my system and access to the, the, the carbon to crystalline makeup of the physical body and watching and, and, and the algorithms for how everything, 
that was not, I hated school, okay? I was an <laughs> art student that was great at math. Now, I didn't understand how, how numbers came in. But the thing about it was that wasn't my human knowledge. That was the unified field. That was higher wisdom knowledge that I had accessed by pulling away and shutting the whole world thought out and going inside of myself and sitting for all of the answers to come. And they start coming in geometric equations and shapes and quantum physics and all of the things that our human doesn't have the capacity in the beginning to understand. But as you raise your vibrational frequency, this is your new language. That's fascinating. And just amazes me. I'm so curious. I'm so curious. I mean, Good. To know more and to get curious, girl. (laughs) Yeah, that's no problem. I'm very curious. At least that's awesome because when you surround yourself with all of this, you're not going to care about all of that other stuff. Your priority. So it's really important to get obsessed. And I tell everybody, get obsessed until you you are thirsting for the not knowledge to feed your mind, mm-hmm. but knowledge to open you up. Mm-hmm. And when you get obsessed with that knowledge, you're, what you're doing is you're going into absorbing mode. You're flooding your system. And I did it too. I watched every video. I, yes. I books <laughs> upon books. And that's a part, and most don't understand, that's a part of the activation process where you're activating your higher consciousness. You're activating the knowledge that you, and these are activating the encode, your encoded DNA that, that was dormant mm-hmm. so that you can activate all of this information and knowledge that you have access to too, but you can't activate it if you're not going to get obsessed with it because what you're obsessed with is your new existence. Right. And I, I what, feel like that has been going on for some, a few years now for me where I've been just absorbing and obsessed and I can't learn enough because that's what you're it's, doing. It's not that Good. I'm bored and I think I want to go learn something new. It's like I'm experiencing in myself and I go, this is me. This is what's happening. Let me go see if I can match it somewhere out there, you know, and that's in turn. You're activating light encoded DNA knowledge through using what you have at your disposal to activate that. Okay. And what happens is when you go into that process of needing to read and and watch the videos, you're activating all that dormant knowledge that was inside of you, that that there has to be an activation for that. Well, the easiest way is to just flood yourself, surround yourself. Anything that I want in my world, I flood myself. I flood my consciousness with it. And it just brings it in when it was time to activate the mermaid realm. I just flooded myself with mermaids and everything aquatic. And you go down to the beach and you really don't understand what you're doing when you're doing these things. Right. Then when it came in, you know, in time for my crystalline structure to kick in, I got obsessed with crystals. And then, then once you hit a certain vibration, then crystals move out and the Andaras moved in. Then I got obsessed with them and look at what happened with that. So <laughs> When your obsession is something that feeds your highest state of consciousness, then you're actually activating all your dreams and desires here as a human and a soul because they eventually become the same thing. But in the beginning, you don't know what that is. And, And so it's a path of being restricted for a lot of people. You'll have things removed from your reality to get you on a different path. Yes, I exactly know what you're talking about. If you are given those things that make things easier, you're not going to take the path that you need to take. So they'll be removed from you until you learn what the path is and how to stay on the path without without leaving the path anymore. Then once you get it, and, and basically this is when you move into full service. So once you've done all the absorption of knowledge and you've activated everything and and you've learned to live in integrity and dedicate yourself to service, the more dedicated you are to in service to the whole by honoring you, this is where the balance comes in, honoring you so that you can honor all others too, honoring you so that you can be in service, honoring you so that you can experience all your dreams and desires here. The more you do that, eventually one day you will wake up. For me, I woke up basically over a period of time. But basically, I was told when it was time to come to Kauai, the words were, do nothing but focus on your physical body vibration now. 
fill your bed with all your crystals and sleep in them. Grid your bed. And I was sleeping with 200 quartz crystals. My whole body was shaking 24 hours a day. I thought I was going to leave this whole planet. It was like, this, it was intense as an understatement. But I had to get my physical body vibration up. Because I was about to walk out of the third and the fourth dimension into the fifth dimension where everything else collapses and goes away and it doesn't exist anymore. All the stories go, all the visuals go. You don't even have a, a, the, the Akashic records get completely cleared. And the words were, you are now in full service. You'll never ask for anything ever again. Mm. But then it was stepping in complete faith and trust. And, and, and that's when the challenge comes in. And that's what a lot of people are challenged with right now is they're having to learn to trust that inner knowledge, that inner knowing over what the physical world says. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and you will learn to trust that inner knowing above all, because that's going to be the one thing that's always going to bring you through, always going to look out for you, always going to make sure you're okay, always and not only just that, that's where all your abundance is going to come from. That's where all the amazingness and the magic comes from. But when you don't listen, that's when all the experiences come from. Because that's the, okay. Human says, I need proof. And for us, the more conscious you become, the more proof becomes a two by four or a Mack truck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> And we learned to stop asking for proof a long time ago because we didn't like the form it came in to get us to pay attention and to listen and come from honor, come from respect, come from that place inside every time, not when it's just convenient. And that's key. The human will only do this when it's convenient. Eventually, what will happen is the other way won't be convenient anymore. Exactly. Very well said. Uh huh. Exactly. And so we learn to love the convenience, the awesomeness over the other ways that we used to have to ask for because we didn't want to believe. We didn't want to open up. We didn't want to do. And this is the key part. Your divine feminine is the one that learns to be. Just be. Nobody cares. Let it all go. You don't care. You come, you open up. It's all fuzzy wuzzy. You're tingling inside. Everything's amazing. Bliss. No stories. Nobody cares. It's all gone. Your divine masculine is the doer. It's the one that functions. You have to be in that being state first and then step up and do. Be, do, be, do. And what happens is in order to come into unity consciousness, full-blown unity consciousness, and I told you this before we started, and you have to open up and share. You have to open up and become the humanitarian. You have to open up and become the generous one. You have to open up and become the one that unites. You have to open up and be the one that comes from love. You are the one that has to open up. And then everything around you starts to resonate at that frequency too. And if it doesn't, you're the one that has to say, no, not anymore. Exactly. Because it can't leave your reality as long as you're still playing in it and still keep recreating it in your world. Because when you move into looking at your whole physical reality as your creation, when you look at that out there and, and take command, commander of a ship. Right, your own vessel. Oh, uh, yep, your own vessel. When you look at that whole world out there and realize that you hold all those programs inside your body, you'll go inside and figure out where that is and you'll get it the hell out of you. Just say, oh, no, no more. No, nope. I want to, I don't want to keep having that experience. I want the awesome one. And that's what I started doing. Okay, universe, I want the awesome one. And then I would be shown what was in my world that was in the way. And then it was up to me to move it out, move it out, Lisa, move it out. Now it was never comfortable. Right. That's not what this is about. It's not meant to be comfortable for your human. It's meant to be very uncomfortable for your human. To move out of it, right. Yeah. And when that's what everybody's going through is the discomfort of, of, of humanness, ego, separation. Mm -hmm. The thing about it is, is that all that's got to go. And if you got anything left, it's going to go. And if, it, it's, if it's represented, if it's not love and unity in your world, it's got to go. Right, exactly. Yep. Love and unity versus the fear and separation. That's really what this goes down. Like this transition is between those two points right there. This process. That's because 
Love and unity is heaven on earth. Mm. The other is hell. Mm. Beautiful. We are exactly. living out the epitome of the literal heaven on earth or hell. Yes. If you look at your world, it's either heaven or it's hell. Or if it's in the middle, you're stuck in purgatory, working through all the duality that you hold inside. The moment you realize that you get to choose a heavenly new earth existence, then you'll actually start choosing it instead of waiting until one day it might arrive. That's the old human's way of one day, mm -hmm. one day. Let's look at the date on the calendar and see when this, no, <laughs> no. No, 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 no. It's like right now. Yep. The moment you make that decision, you collapse those timelines where you have to wait until that time. And years ago, when, when I went through one of my bigger embodiment projects, because I've gone through so many, you, you embody everything. And when you do, you collapse time. But, but I had gone through three days of full blown high, 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 high being and all the watching Lemuria in my bedroom play and all the, and like, wow, Atlantis over here. Uh, and and little galactics floating around all over the place and, and bizarre and, and loving every moment. Like, I don't ever want to leave this. This is awesome. I'm sure you didn't. <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> and then my universe said, get up and go to the store. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I got to take a shower and leave. But I didn't know that I'd been sitting in those really high vibrations for three. And the whole time I'm on Facebook writing for, okay, people. <laughs> <laughs> because I wrote the whole time I went through everything to explain to everybody what was going to mm -hmm. come. And that was my job, was to write as we went through it. So the information would be out there, put the books out, put, do the interviews. It didn't really matter what it was. Do whatever it takes so that it can be found, mm -hmm. so that, that people understand this is the new normal. Right, exactly, the new normal. Lisa, we've already, we've already gone know. over a few minutes. Uh, I hate it too because I feel like I could do the whole summit with you on each of these topics. There's so much amazing information. Um, we, have, we, we need to go in just a moment or two. Do you want to just take a real quick like last word or talk about your gift or how would you wrap this up? You've said so many amazing, beautiful things and I just am so grateful for the way you've described so much of this because I just know this is going to be so helpful. Good. That's why we do these things, right? Yes, yes, it yes. is to give all that information so that people, um, I think the biggest thing right now because of where we are with global consciousness and all of the collective stuff going on, because this is about um, of a, a new humanity. Yes. One that comes from unity, love, peace, respect, and comes together and works together and, and gets over their own stuff. And, and a lot of people don't understand you have to be fully invested in a whole new reality in order to get a new reality. It's not a part-time thing and it's not a, what's convenient for me it's all in um it's your whole body it's it, it's your whole mind it's all of your emotions it, it's a fully interactive experience It's fully engaged with everything that you are and and it's it's bringing your highest aspects into your physical form and, and for the embodiment in, in order to to raise your vibration high enough so you can experience physical realities that are happening physical realities that are blissful and magical and everybody works together and everybody looks out for each other and everybody comes together and it, it's pure peace it's beautiful i get up every day and i'm posting pictures okay uh, guys this is we're not suffering in the higher dimensional realms of existence we're having an amazing time we're not lacking for anything our worlds are not collapsing because we did that already so for for me for everybody it, it's make that commitment to yourself and go all in with everything that you've got and make this your priority if you want to have an easier transition from old earth to new because you are going to go through the death and this comes back to the phoenix cycle um you're going to go through the death of all of your old everything that was unconscious and everything that was embedded in your body has to be cleansed and purified too for you to raise a physical body vibration high enough to walk on new earth with those of us who are already here. And so understanding vibrational existences, understanding the energy of how it all works, our whole world changes, but it means we have to completely open up and be ready for it or we get drugged through it backwards, sideways and upside down and inside out. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Definitely true. So choose a different path. 
basically choose the one, but basically at how invested you are. And I am going to go to money for one moment because this is a huge misperception for a lot of people. And it's really important to say, if you will not invest your money in you and your soul's purposes and, and creating and bringing new forth here, then it's not worth it to you. You don't get to experience it fully. Because the human will covet money over the soul. Your soul has to be worth spending your money on or you're saying it's not worth it to me. And your universe is going to show you how opposite that statement is. Mm -hmm. For those of us that had to go through it and got drugged through it, I had to learn to spend every penny I had on my soul's purposes, on my missions, on. And basically, there were many sayings. One was, how much would you pay for peace? Mm-hmm. And the answer was apparently everything I got because I started spending my money to create peace in my world so that I could be at peace in, in order to do what I was here to do. Right. Moving, getting, it didn't matter what it was, but it cost me everything I had in the beginning because it had to be that important. The other was if you're not willing to invest in you, then nobody else or nothing is willing is going to be willing to invest in you either. Definitely. And basically you're saying my soul's not worth it. And and you're telling your higher self, your universe, that it's not important enough yet. Make it important. Mm -hmm. And and we learned those lessons a long time ago. We we, we learned that this is an opportunity. You learn the energy of of money and abundance and all of those things. You, You learn why you have things at all. And they all have to serve a purpose of higher light. They all have to serve your soul's purposes or you don't get to keep them. Right. Right. Like you said, all in and all these aspects are exactly all, in. all in. Right. And everywhere you hold back, you're not sure. Then you're telling your universe that immediate. I'm not sure activates a timeline to bring forth something to, to let you decide. And when you start to understand how all of this works, it gets really, really easy. The moment you commit your time, your energy, your money, they're all the same thing. I can see time, that. energy, money are the same thing. When you dedicate your time and your energy to this, then money comes as a response. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When you dedicate your, your complete everything to this, you get a whole new reality, one that's awesome, but the old one's going to have to go. And that's what everything is in. Everybody on earth that is experiencing suffering and, and all of this stuff is stuck in their, their ego the human separation and not willing to make the commitment that it takes to themselves in order to do yeah. what's necessary for everybody here as one. Yes. It, it, that commitment is also a very important word because it is an all in commitment and it, yep. and you just go from there. But your return is a billion fold to what you commit. So that's <laughs> the key part. Yes, and so if it. you want to talk about the special gift, I, I, what I decided to do, and I don't know if you and I talked about this before, I can't remember, but I have one that I did um, that I, I've been using lately that's really popular. So I think I've decided to go with that again, which is called Abundance Karma. And it is a quantum light activation that actually goes straight to your cellular um, imprints, programs, memory, and it, and, and, it, and it recodes and decodes and unanchors and does all of these things. And basically it transmits the the highest frequency possible into your cellular memory and and replaces it with unity, Mm. which is where your abundance comes from. Because the more unified you are inside, the more abundant you become. And so I did one based upon unification in order to activate your abundance here. And it clears the old karmic imprints that we carried um, from separation before. And technically, anything that comes forth from unity consciousness won't collapse anymore. Got it. You don't lose it anymore. Mm. And the foundation for new earth and all of your realities are built energetically on certain energies. And so this will go straight to all of that. So I decided to use that one again, just because that one's like helping a whole lot of people. Yeah, um, exactly. And it felt really important for the time we're in because it works on a unification level and the highest consciousness possible to clear all karmic programming. And we don't do karma anymore after a while, but until you've cleared all unconscious programs, then you're suffering your own karma from all your lineages and existences. It's not just this one right here. So it takes total 
unification inside to transcend all of that mm -hmm. and for it to to completely go so well that's that sounds that sounds perfect. Extremely fundamental to all that we're talking about. And I know that everyone, I can't wait to hear it myself. Uh, and I know every, <laughs> everybody will get a lot out of that, I'm sure. And Lisa, just, and speaking of getting a lot out of, I so appreciate your time. I genuinely very much appreciate your being here and, and just beautiful conversation. You've touched on so many important things and I just know it's going to help a lot of people. It's helping me and uh, yeah, and that's what this it's is. It's important. About. Yeah, for all yeah. of us, because remember, everything you do, you do for all. Yes, yes, which is important. important. And and technically, when you're sleeping, you're in service. When you're clearing, you're in service. So so it doesn't have to be a big thing in the beginning. You just have to focus on you and that you're doing it intentionally and consciously, and you're in service when you are. That's all you got to do. The rest will come for you that the challenge is going to be accomplished and take all the opportunities and the awesomeness your universe starts throwing at you because you're ready. And because the moment you open up, your universe is going to start throwing you everything, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the good stuff, the magic, the wonderment, the play, the, well, but even the physical realities, everything you desire that you don't even know you desire is going to start coming forth for you too. Because in the beginning you won't know what your soul's purposes are until you start taking those little steps. Right. And then it starts unfolding. More and, and then more. it starts unfolding. You got to yeah. take the step first. You got to listen to the little crazy wacko things that challenge your fear. Right. Those are the things that open up all those other things that you desire that you're not even aware of yet. Yes. So okay. I had to do it too. <laughs> oh, it's just part of the process. Absolutely. I mean, there's yes. no doubt about that, that trust and surrender, but wow. Thank okay. you, sweetheart. You're very And welcome. everybody. Thank you. Yes. Thank you everybody for joining us. Wow. We could go on and on. I just, I'm so grateful, Lisa. Thank you so much for everything Thank you've you. done and that you do in the world. And to you too. I love your energy. We've had a blast. So. <laughs> We've had a blast. We'll need to do it again somewhere down the road. I would love <laughs> yes, we will. Way. Very cool. much. And keep going because this is important. So thank you for what you're doing because it does matter that everybody is now banding together and coming together and, and really uniting in, in a way that there was too much separation before. So it, it's, it's absolutely awesome for all of us now. That, that are doing this because we're all coming together in all new ways. So thank you for the opportunity and opening that portal for all of us. Too. You're very welcome. And that's exactly why I'm doing this. And I just want more people to see and know and learn and grow. And, you know, who knows where it'll go. It's not my, not even my concern. I just want to do what I do. And then I know. Wide open, right baby. Wide open. Wide open. <laughs> and it'll just come and it'll be so easy. <laughs> and you just recognize when you got fear or belief that you can't and just say, nope, not true. Come on universe. And, and basically, and I'm going to go back to this, take your hand universe in hand, do it together. Okay. You'll never be alone. It's your new best friend. You will always have a partner. You will always have guidance. You will always, whether it be here or inside, it doesn't really matter. You have to stay open and stay connected. That's the challenge. Don't ever yes. disconnect. <clears throat> exactly. And I, I, I know what you're talking about. I feel my universe with me. It's just a matter of, do I have one foot over there or both feet over here? You know, where am I exactly? But I know exactly what That's the process. The, mm, yes. the, that's the process of realizing when you can get pushed off balance, when you exactly. can separate off, when you can go unconscious, all these words. Um, that's the process of coming back inside. Coming back, my like present, God, come, come back inside, bring it all right back inside. And the moment you bring it all inside, it all expands right back out. And that's such a beautiful feeling. I love it. Bring it in, expand out and just keep doing that. And you'll be amazed at how fast you can expand and how easy you can maintain that. If you're going to a meeting and you've got anything going on, close your eyes, go inside and expand. Just go inside and expand and do that until that's your natural way of being again. This is returning to a very natural way. Yes. It's very simple and easy here. Yes. Beautiful. Okay. And I will be more conscious of that expansion. I definitely will. So thank you for that. Yay. Okay. Well, much okay. love to you, Lisa, and to Hawaii. You too, sweetheart. And yes, um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we will see you again on another interview. Bye, everybody.